So you may have noticed this new addition to Performance Max audience signals called the search themes. Well, in this video, I'm going to go over how Performance Max audience signals have slightly changed with this new addition and how you can best structure your Performance Max audience signals to make the most of them. And big spoiler here, not much has changed. The only change is custom segments now is called search themes and it is in a beta mode. So it might not be rolled on forever. It might be taken away. Um, but yeah, this is just best. This is how you can best structure your audience signals to make the most of search themes. So let's break it down. So in theory, all search themes are they should be treated like a search campaign. I've said this a lot previously with asset groups. Your asset groups in your performance max are pretty much ad groups like in your search campaign. Now, what you need to do with these search themes in particular is to treat them like they are the keywords in your ad group. So for example, if you're going broad with your asset group, say it's more of a catch all type of asset group, then you want to use broad search themes. And again, if you want to be more specific with your asset group, which I do recommend, I recommend doing both, then you want to be more specific with your search themes. Now it's pretty simple. So let's just have a look at what actually Google recommends. So I went on to here uh, and just learned a little bit more about search themes. So this is quite interesting if you roll down to the bottom here. This section here, can I enter competitor brands or product names as search themes? And the answer is yes. So yes, competitor brands and keywords can be used as specific, well, as search themes, but you are responsible to complying. So if they're trademarks, say if they've got a trademark in their brand name, then probably best not to use them. If they don't, then feel free. If they're a smaller competitor, then absolutely. But that's one to bear in mind. If you're going to use a competitor campaign, and your keywords are now your competitor brand names, then you can use these in your search themes. But other than that, not much has changed. So the, uh, with the taken away of custom segments, previously we had the benefit of using customer segments, custom segments, sorry, which allowed us to use competitor websites, competitor apps, as well as keywords that we inputted. So that's gone away a little bit. It's a bit less granular and a bit more rounded with these search themes. You can only add up to 10 in there, so make sure they're as specific as possible or you're using them on the most high quality search themes you can possibly think of. Okay, so that covers the search themes part of the stuff. I'll, I've added a little bit more into the other sections here. So if you watch my previous video, this leads on from that, but pr still my previous video has all the relevant data possible. But let's move on to the next section here, which is your data. So your data is the most important part of your audience signal. If you're going to fill up anything, fill in your data. So let's just go back to this demo and look what that is. So do you have any, do you have any first party data that can be used to help reach your customers? So first party data here means your previous customers. So there's two sides I like to use. If you have a lack of data, a lack of previous customer data and you can't reach uh, an audience size of a thousand because you do need to have a thousand users to make up an audience with Google, bear that in mind. If you don't have that, then these are the audience data se uh, segments I recommend you to use. So this is specifically for Ecom. So what I recommend you to use is total website visitors over a 90 day duration. Okay. And then the second one I recommend you to use is the product page website visitors. So that specific product, if you're using it as a specific asset group, use that URL in uh, when you're making up this audience here. And I like to do it over the last 90 days because when you're using website visitors, you want to keep the data fresh and it always will refresh with a, with a website visitors list like this. It's not like a CSV file that you have to refresh, it's always fresh, okay? So that's a benefit of that. But this isn't the strongest sort of data. You really want to use your previous customer data. So the previous customer data I recommend you to use is these three if you're using Ecom. So the first one is total purchases. Now that'll be all of your purchase, purchases uh, inputted into a CSV file and uploaded to Google Ads. But the better way to do that, especially for Ecom, because if you're running an Ecom store, you're probably running email marketing using Klaviyo, MailChimp or whatever. 
but most of these can be plugged into Google Ads and you can pull lists from your email marketing software into Google that are live lists. And what we mean by live lists is they are automatically populated. So you, once you've made them, you do not need to refresh them. They are always gonna have the freshest data in there possible, which is great because I don't like refreshing CSV files. They're a pain in the ass. I want it live and it means it's guaranteed top quality. Okay, so these are the three I recommend. Your total purchases, your specific product purchases, and the top 25% of spenders at your store. Now, how do you use these audiences, these data segments here? Well, I recommend you to do a couple of things. The first one I would do, I would populate all three into one audience signal. Then I would also run another asset group, which is just, just testing total purchases. Now, and I'll run enough, another duplicate asset group that is just testing specific product purchases. Now, and I will also run another asset group that is just testing top 25% of spenders. Okay, it's just how you would run ad sets in, in Facebook ads. You would run these as your audiences and run them for two weeks, see which one performs the best and turn off the other two. It's just as simple as that. It's creative testing. It's what you do to progress your account because you want to identify the data that resonates the best in terms of the algorithm and finds the best users who are going to come through with a purchase of your e-com store. Okay, so that's what I recommend for e-com. This is what I recommend for lead gen. It's slightly different. I work with both e-com and lead gen clients. I have, I have specific experience across both industries. Okay, so the first one is gonna be very similar total website visitors and product page website visitors. Again, if you don't have all the data to make a thousand people, uh, a thousand people in your list, then you won't be able to upload it to Google. So I recommend using this. Next one I recommend to use is your full customer list. Okay, after that, again, if you don't have like specific customers, one thing you can do is your leads. If you have leads that are classified as marketing qualified leads or sales qualified leads, populate these into a list and upload them to Google. If you're using a CRM like HubSpot, you can connect it automatically and this is live. I love using live lists. They're the best things to come from uh, Google updates. So try and use these as best as possible. Try and see if your CRM can connect to, uh, to Google ads and has the ability to create live lists because it's so handy. So the next one I have is specific product customer lists. If you have multiple products, then you want to be more specific with some of the asset groups you may be using. So you want to be more specific with the customer lists you upload to that because you want the algorithm to go on to find people who are similar to the product purchases of the product you're wanting to sell. Okay, so that's one thing to use. Next thing, and I've had some uh, experience using these, is segmenting your customer list into three different sections. So the first one being high value customers. So the best value, similar to this, it'd be like the top 25% of spenders for your e-com store. You're sort of segmenting it a similar way for your lead generation um, Pmax here. Then you have a mid value customers, then you have low value customers. Now it's not to say that high value customers is always going to be the best because I have found out that using all three of these in separate asset groups actually performs quite similar. Okay, you might have different tiers of people who spend in your stores and people who are high value customers may spend a lot, but there may not be a huge amount of volume there. Okay, so this is why you want to segment them out and test all three. Do not write something off before you've tested it, especially with Google Ads. Okay, so that is my recommendations of what is what exactly what I use with clients and uh, I'm giving it to you for free. Okay, so go away and use that as best as you can and try and use live lists from email marketing software like Klaviyo, MailChimp or your CRM like HubSpot, okay? Next one we have is interests and detailed demographic. So let's go down here and this is your interest and detailed demographic here. So the way this works is typically what I would do is I would type in my specific keywords. So similar to if I was using this as a search campaign, I would be inputting the keywords I would use for that ad group into my interest and detailed demographic to identify certain audiences I can use in my audience signal. But what I'm gonna be here is specific. I'm gonna make sure all of the audiences and detailed demographic I use are all relevant. If they're not relevant, I'm not gonna use them. Okay, so don't go overboard here. Don't like just tick, 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 tick. You wanna be specific. And if you wanna have a number to it, 
aim to have 10 maximum, no more than that, unless they are relevant, okay? And the reason I don't go so overboard with this is your insights tab, when you're progressing your campaign, will show you index audiences that are worth adding into your campaign. And what we mean by index is uh, audiences that are actually translating to conversions or conversion value. So indexed is good. If they have a higher index, they're more relevant to your to your campaign and more reasoning, you should have them in there and optimizing towards them. So that's why I don't go too overboard with them and I just make sure I let the data show me what is working. Okay, and just so this video isn't too long, we'll finish off in this. And the final section is demographic. So demographic at the bottom here, okay, is this. So you can have gender, age, you can also have parental status and household income. What I recommend here is, well, Google firstly recommends to be more open with this, and I try to be as much as I can, but again, you want to be specific here, and you want to match your ideal customer profile, your ICP. So you have a product, your product is not gonna be serving people who are both male and female, aged 18 to 65 plus. That's just not your product, <laughs> that's not your target demographic, okay? So you wanna tailor your demographic to match whatever your ICP is saying. So, okay. Um, overall, that's it. That's my best advice for audience signals. It's what I've been using and I've been doing a lot of research into audience signals and this is my best structure. Currently, times change and marketing changes all the time. So I will refresh as much as I can. But that is my, uh, my, is my recommendation so far. So if you guys like that one and um, you want to connect with me on LinkedIn, ask me anything about this, then please do. I, uh, I accept everyone and, I, and anyone who messages me, I always reply. So please feel free to reach out to me and I'd love to have a conversation. Okay, guys, thank you for that. I'll see you in the next one.